Making mistakes in life is unavoidable, and we often use our mistakes as lessons to improve ourselves. But making mistakes in real estate can have a very different outcome. Buying a piece of real estate for most people is the largest single purchase they'll ever make in their life. So when you make a mistake in real estate, it can be catastrophic. I've seen investors lose all of their money, have to claim bankruptcy, lose relationships, and in some cases, end up with criminal charges or in jail. So needless to say, we wanna to try to avoid as many mistakes as possible as real estate investors. In this video, I'll break down the 10 biggest mistakes investors make and how you can avoid them. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's dive right in. Number 10, expecting that the market will always go up. Over the past 15 years, real estate has been a solid investment. We haven't really seen a dip in the market of any significance, but the real estate market is cyclical, which means it moves in a circle and what goes up must come down. Now, the great thing about the real estate market is when it does come down and comes back up again, it usually comes up higher than where it was before. And this is why real estate is such a solid investment. But if your entire strategy in real estate hinges on the market going up, this is called real estate speculating, not investing. The market will eventually come down. So make Make sure you're in a position to sustain during the down times. Number nine, treating your tenants poorly. Your tenants are your customers and in real estate investing, you need customers. You want good customers and the way you can get good customers is by screening tenants very carefully. But once you've placed them in your property, do your best to treat them well. If you do treat them well, they will generally reciprocate. This doesn't mean I let my tenants get away with anything that's not allowed, but sometimes I'll do a few things for them and I find that by doing so, they'll usually do a few nice things for me in return. This is reciprocity at its finest. One simple thing I do is give my tenants a gift on the day that they move in. Something tangible around $50 sitting on the counter when they come into the property lets them know that you respect them as a customer. Number eight, going over budget. This one has been very difficult over the past two years. Construction costs have risen significantly and labor shortages have delayed many projects. But even before the pandemic, a lot of investors, uh, myself included, often underestimate the cost of a renovation and the timelines. Going over budget by five to 10% is pretty normal and you should have enough contingency built in that that is sustainable. But going 20, 30, sometimes 50% over budget can be the difference of whether a project is profitable or not. Do your best to create a detailed renovation budget before getting into a project and try to stick to it as much as possible. Number seven, having one exit strategy. I don't flip a lot of properties, not because it's not profitable. If done correctly, it's a great way to make quick cash inside of your real estate investing business. The reason I don't flip a lot of properties is because there's only one exit strategy. The properties that I do flip usually work as rentals as well. So if the market were to soften, then I could rent the property out. It still makes cash flow and I can wait for the market to go back up again and then sell it. This is having multiple exit strategies. Number six, lack of knowledge. Knowledge. As I mentioned, real estate is usually the single largest purchase that most people will make in their lives. And it's shocking to me how many people do this with little to no knowledge. If you're planning to get into real estate investing, educate yourself. Watching YouTube videos, reading books, and listening to podcasts is great and can be very helpful. But I truly believe that if you wanna be successful as a real estate investor, you'll have to pay for coaching or a mentorship program of some sort. The benefit of additional education is that it usually expedites your journey as a real estate investor and the money you spend usually pays itself back in the first deal. You don't need to spend tens of thousands of dollars, but when you do invest in your education, you'll be more motivated to see results. Shameless plug coming. Before we get to the top five, let me take 15 seconds to tell you a little bit about my new and improved real estate investing masterclass. This is the most comprehensive real estate investing training on the market today. Whether you are just getting started as a real estate investor or you've got an existing portfolio of properties, and you're looking to take things to the next level, this masterclass will help you get to that next level. There are over 30 modules covering everything from how to screen and place tenants to how to flip properties for profit. You'll also get access to my team of professionals, various spreadsheets and analyzers I use in my business, and the best part, you also get three months of live coaching with me for additional support. Check it out at darrenvoros.com. Use the promo code YouTube for $200 off. Back to our list. The fifth biggest mistake investors make is overpaying. You're seeing it right now in the real estate market. Investors got excited because real estate values kept going up and up and up and people got caught up in the frenzy. 
bidding wars, bully offers, and investors buying properties with no conditions or due diligence. These are ripe scenarios for overpaying for a property. As a general rule, I do not buy properties that are in a bidding war. There's always other options and this can lead to overpaying. The market right now is softening and values are dropping. So someone who purchased at the peak of the market could potentially own a piece of real estate that is worth $100,000 less than they paid for it two months ago. Couple this with rising interest rates and you can see how investors can get in over their head very quickly by getting wrapped up in the frenzy. Avoid overpaying for properties by taking the emotion out of it and strictly relying on your numbers. If the numbers don't work, walk away. There will always be another property. Number four, leveraging too much. Just because you can get a loan on a property doesn't always necessarily mean that you should. There are times when I will leverage up to 100% of the property's value, but I'm careful not to do this across my entire portfolio. I can't tell you the number of investors I've spoken to in the US who in 2008 and 2009 lost everything. They were over leveraged and the market corrected, which is a perfect storm for losing it all. Keep your loan to values in check across your portfolio and always have a backup plan if the market shifts. Number three, doing everything on your own. I've been guilty of this many times as a real estate investor. For many years, I was doing all my own renovations. Yes, I saved a lot of money, but it slowed down my growth. I was also doing a lot of my own bookkeeping, which again was slowing me down. Let the professionals do what they do best and focus on the things that you're good at and you enjoy doing. You should also understand which tasks yield the highest pay for you by breaking them down on an hourly rate. Get rid of the $15 an hour jobs and focus on the ones where you are making $100 dollars an hour or more. Number two, falsifying your numbers. We find a beautiful rental property that we are excited about owning and we run our numbers to make sure that it's going to work. The numbers come back and they're less than ideal. So what do we do? We start to adjust the numbers to make the deal work. I'm sure I could get $200 more for rent per month than the market is getting right now. I think that I can shave $5,000 off that renovation and I think the property is going to be worth more money when we're done even though there's no comps to support that. These are all ways we can falsify our numbers to make them work for a transaction. I'll say it again, real estate investing should not be emotional. It should be based on actual numbers. If the numbers don't work, don't adjust them so that they do work. That is a recipe for disaster. And the number one mistake investors make is they don't have a plan. I ask this question all the time to investors. What's your goal with real estate investing? The answer I usually get is I want to make money, but how much money? And so many investors say they either want to make $100,000 of passive income or they want to add a million dollars to their net worth. These are great targets and they are achievable inside of real estate investing. What's the plan that's going to get you there? If your average property in your portfolio generates $500 a month in passive income, in order to generate $100,000 a year in passive income, you need 16 properties in your portfolio. If you're only acquiring one every year, that will take you 16 years to get there. If that timeline doesn't work for you, then you've got to put a plan in place to expedite. What's amazing is that when you have a plan, you'll usually achieve your goals that much much faster. So start putting a plan in place and reverse engineer what you need to accomplish to achieve your goals. Mistakes are unavoidable as a real estate investor, but the size of those mistakes can be the difference of whether you use them as a learning experience or whether they force you out of real estate investing altogether. The best piece of advice I can give you is to learn from others' mistakes. There is nothing new in real estate investing. Someone has already forged the path and is doing exactly what you want to do. Find them, follow them, and learn from their mistakes so you don't have to experience them for yourself. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you made any mistakes as a real estate investor? If you're okay to share, leave them in the comment section below. If you have specific questions about real estate investing, you can leave those in the comment section as well. If you're not already doing so, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.